Hello and welcome to the Wicked Things Podcast. Haven, the story of lightning is one of the few story series created specifically for younger listeners. This is a fast-paced story full of magic, conspiracy, fantasy, talking animals, and exploration of a primeval world that awaits the listener, we hope you enjoy. The room vibrated. Everyone could feel something was about to happen. Slick and Striper felt a growing sensation of the world around them spinning. The dizzying sensation drove them to sit, instead of risking falling down, as the pressure continued to grow. The spiritual pressure in the chamber rose, which also raised the vibration of the beings inside the chamber. Lightning focused on guiding the spiritual magic to flow into his horn and out of him, creating a circuit with the crystals of the chamber. He heard a soft voice calling out to him as his vibration continued to rise. First, I want you to envision a long earthen tunnel. Next, I want you to walk down the tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, you see five steps leading you down deeper into the tunnel. Keeper's voice carried his many years of experience. I want you to move down the steps, but at each step I want you to take in and release a deep, cleansing breath. With each breath, I want you to relax deeper. Count down the steps with me. His voice continued to inspire confidence in his pupil. Inhale. And exhale. Five. Relaxing your feet as they become heavy. Inhale. And exhale. Four. Relaxing your legs as they become heavy. Inhale and exhale. Three. Relaxing your hands as they become heavy. You are almost at the bottom. Inhale and exhale. Two. Your arms relax and become heavy. The heaviness holds your body here as we move on. Inhale and exhale. One. Relaxing your chest as the heaviness settles throughout your body. Keeper continues the instruction as he whispers to lightning. Inhale and exhale. One last time as your head and neck become heavy. In front of this last step, you see an earthen archway. Keeper's words are no longer words, so much as non-verbal instructions. Lightning continues to decipher the instructions as the impressions fill his mind. Step through the archway onto a long, sandy shoreline. The waves of a limitless ocean of consciousness ebb and flow onto the beach. When I look to my left down the beach, I see another archway, and I know this is the tunnel that would take me into my future. He continues to focus on the impressions making their way into his consciousness. When I look to my right down the beach, I see another archway, and I know this is the tunnel that would take me into my past. He continues to focus on the impressions making their way into his consciousness. He looks out over the wide ocean of universal consciousness. He knows, should he need answers to anything above or below, that by wading in, then sending the question out as a thought, the universe will answer his question. Even if he does not like the response, it will come to him here, with truth and love. He stood on the beach, feeling the loving, golden rays of the Creator on his face and body. He knew he was here in this place. Not dead, but he had moved out of his body to this spiritual plane of existence. Oh my god! 
He looked down at his body. It was not the body he knew. He found himself inside the body of the man. His spirit knew he was a man, not the cursed form of the animal he and the rest of the people of Haven lived in from day to day. Lightning held his hand out before his face and wiggled his fingers. He examined each as a newborn discovering his body in amazement. He examined every part of his true body in shock and awe. At that moment, he realized someone or something was approaching him. He took a defensive stance. An armored human with great wings, carrying a sword and shield, stood before him. It placed itself between him and the perceived threat. He knew this was his guardian, and that all beings were protected by two such beings. I will allow no harm to come to you here. He heard the guardian's voice in his head. A smaller being knelt down beside him and helped return him to his feet. This one wore the robes of his ancient people from before the curse. I am your guide. Allow me to help you. Its words came with a sense of well-being that filled him. Lightning came to recognize the approaching being, but he too no longer resembled the ancient turtle that had become both his teacher and his friend. Instead, now standing in front of him was a tall man with a tall golden hat of timeless wisdom. Keeper? Keeper nodded. I know it will take time to get used to seeing both me and yourself like this. However, we need to find Slicker and return him. I fear without his spirit, the health of the body may fade. What is this place, Keeper? Lightning dared to ask the most obvious question. He already knew the answer before they gave it to him. I have always called it the Eternal Shore. I go here to find answers and learn. Like I know from wading into the surf that Slicker's spirit wandered away from the shore and followed a rabbit trail in fear, Keeper offered. Keeper gestured for Lightning to follow him into an earthen archway a short distance away along the beach. A sensation of dread took hold of Lightning as they approached. I don't want to go in there, Keeper, he stated. Try to calm your mind and heart. I have done many spirit retrievals over my years, Keeper explained as he entered the tunnel first. Lightning followed close behind his teacher. Keeper pushed deeper into the tunnel, pulling masses of vines out of his path, gesturing for Lightning to pass first. Lightning noticed he was feeling a little dizzy, and before he knew it, a vision presented itself to him. He watched as Tremere and the herd turned against thunder at the Alpha Ceremony. The Animal Council gathered his allies against thunder and rain to support Tremere. He could not make out their words, but witnessed as thunder and rain tried to explain that what they wanted couldn't happen. Lightning grabbed Keeper. Something's happening. Keeper looked at his pupil with empathy in his heart. I know about the coup but we must save your friends before we lose him. You knew all along about this, Lightning growled. Keeper lowered his head in shame at the ground. Yes, I have known for some time. I went to Thunder to offer a warning, but he assured me he could handle anything that came up during our training. Lightning's mouth hung open as he found himself at a loss for words, but spoke anyway. You mean to tell me? Yes. He knew as a son of your age you would never listen to your father's instruction. Rebellion is always in every adolescent's heart. Just like his father before him, they guided you. Keeper explained to lightning surprise. The tunnel's end opened into a great wide green valley surrounded by snow-covered peaks. A green and brown wall of titanic trees encircled the valley. 
At the center of the valley, a single line of smoke rose high into the air from the chimney of a lone log-style cabin. Keeper leads the way to the cabin's doorstep. He is hiding inside. Be careful, he may not remember us in these bodies. Then we need to keep him calm and understanding of his emotional state, Lightning asked. Keeper smiled, knowing his pupil was developing his trust of his instincts. Keeper knocked on the cabin door. Slicker, you need to let us in. We're here to help. A voice full of uncertainty called out in response from inside. Who are you? What do you want? How do you know me? Keeper motioned for Lightning to take over the conversation. Slicker, it's me, Lightning, he called out to his confused friend. Lightning? What's happening? My body, it's not my body. Slicker's shaken voice continued to plead for answers. Calm down and focus on my words, Slicker. Lightning worked to calm his frightened friend. You need to open this door and let us in, Lightning instructed Slicker. Can't you walk in? There are things out there that keep trying to get inside, Slicker begged. Things? Lightning looked around, but found nothing. Keeper gestured towards the end of the small wooden porch. Look there. Relax your mind and let your vision open to find the truth. Lightning's vision blurred, but then he perceived two protective spiritual beings waiting outside the cabin. Lightning heard the whispers from his guide. They are his angelic guardian and spiritual guide. They want to help him, but his sudden and unplanned arrival here gave them no chance to calm and educate him before he fled from their sight. Like us, they followed him to this place. Slicker pulled back the thin checkerboard colored curtain to get a good look at the porch and those standing there. Lightning gave him a friendly wave. Can you open the door now? Slicker pointed in terror at his guide and guardian, waiting for him to join everyone on the porch. They are not going anywhere and we don't have long to get you back to your body. Keeper appealed to Slicker's rational mind. Slicker, those are your guardian angel and spiritual guide. They may seem scary at first, but they only want to protect and help you. Lightning wanted Slicker to use his logical mind and stop reacting out of fear. Are you sure? Cause at that beach they came right at me. Slicker hit behind the curtain. Lightning and Keeper realized why their friend was reacting the way he had. Slicker's human body revealed him to be a young boy of maybe seven years of age. Slicker cloaked himself in a white cotton bedsheet he discovered inside the cabin. His hair was long and dark, which drew attention to his very attentive hazel eyes. His skin was bronze and his body athletic. What happened, Lightning? Lightning closed his eye and pinched the bridge of his nose to curb the growing pressure of irritation. This is your spiritual body. It represents the true form of your soul, rather than your cursed animal form. Cursed? Slicker questioned. We don't have time for this. Every second we delay here, his physical body grows weaker. Keeper reminded his companions. I'm gonna die? Again? Slicker asked. Keeper sighed. We need to hurry now. The pressure building behind Lightning's eyes continued to grow. The sensation drove him to his knees as piercing lances of pain ripped through his head. Lightning screamed as the pain painted a vision of Shadow, stomping on Thunder's horn, shattering it. Shadow recited primeval words of power, drawing the power of the Alpha Mantle into himself. Rain rushed to Thunder's defense. She was attacked and knocked prone by Shadow's wolf soldiers as other wolves corralled the rest of the herd. They forced the herd to watch as Shadow took what he felt should have been his all along. Lightning opened his eyes to see Keeper and Slicker above him. You okay? Slicker asked the obvious question. Keeper shook his head in disbelief and helped Lightning back to his feet. No time to explain what it was all about. Let's go. 
Slicker walked to the end of the porch, near her spiritual guide and guardian angel. He smiled and nodded. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Slicker spoke aloud to the pair of protectors. Slicker joined Keeper and Lightning to start the journey back to find his body. The three made their way from the cabin and through the tunnel to the eternal shore. Slicker looked up at his adult-bodied friends. How do I find my body? Keeper looked at Lightning as he struggled to remain on his feet, as the lances of pain built behind his eyes again. Calm your mind and listen to your heart. Listen for the voices of Slick and Striper. They are calling to you. Follow their words to your tunnel back to your body. Keeper instructed Slicker. Keeper turned to face his pupil. I will help you get back to your tunnel. Keeper worked hard to keep lightning standing and moving. I can hear them! Slicker yelled and rushed down the shore. His guide and guardian joined Slicker at the entrance to his tunnel. Follow their words. All you have to do is lay back down inside and you will then wake up in your body. Keeper continued instruction. Keeper helped Lightning inside the tunnel that would lead him back to his body. Just like I told Slicker, when you find your body, settle back into it. I will be there. I have something I need to do here before I come back. Lightning tried to smile, but the pain was building to an unbearable intensity. He entered the tunnel and clawed his way back to his body at the top of the stairs beyond the hallway. He struggled as the visions replayed again and again in his head. Wasn't that terrific? I can hardly wait for the next episode. This is the Wicked Things Podcast signing off. Until next time, goodbye.